David Ray, a numismatist and collector of ancient coins and artifacts, particularly those related to the transition in the West from a predominantly pagan society to a predominantly Christian society. Five years ago, I published a book called The Secret Roots of Christianity, which used images, mostly from ancient coins, to track political, religious, and social changes in the West before, during, and immediately after the lifetime of Jesus of Nazareth. Focusing on coin symbols also helped reveal the importance of astrology in the West during the same period. An appreciation of the role that astrology played in the development of Christianity is profoundly revealing about true Christian origins. My first movie introduced an astrological understanding of the sign of Jonah as the keystone for decoding early Christian iconography. My second movie continued decoding early Christian iconography in terms of Gnostic beliefs about astrological ascent and descent comparing ancient artifacts from Rome and Judea, focusing particularly on the Orpheus mosaic, originally found in a mortuary chapel in Jerusalem. Analysis in the first two movies suggests that Gnostic ideas and New Age astrology connect directly to the observant Jewish life and teachings of Jesus of Nazareth. For this to be true, a Gnostic and astrological stream of observant Jewish beliefs must have existed before the death of Jesus and continued to exist afterward. This third movie applies lessons learned about Gnostic astrological iconography in the first two movies toward examining symbols on ancient synagogue mosaic floors, distinctly Jewish remains of ancient synagogues found in modern Israel. Using a Kabbalistic term loosely translated as knowledge, Dath in Sepphoris seems an appropriate title for a movie that analyzes Gnostic astrological influence on the design of the Sepphoris Synagogue Zodiac Mosaic. In Kabbalah, Dath is the place on the Tree of Life where all ten Sephirot, that is, centers of divine emanation, exist as one. Analysis of the symbols on this synagogue floor uncovers surprising similarities between ancient Jewish iconography and Gnostic Christian iconography from approximately the same period of time. This helps identify important features of an ancient type of Galilean Judaism, one that emerged during the lifetime of Jesus, persisted for centuries, and then disappeared replaced by Orthodox Talmudic Judaism. In general, more than 2,000 years ago, political, scientific, and religious developments in and around the Levant combined to launch various forms of New Age apocalypticism. We still celebrate the festival of Hanukkah to honor the miraculous purification of the Jerusalem temple after victory by Jews during the second century BC, when Mattathias the Hasmonean struggled successfully against Antiochus IV of the Seleucids. During the same century, Ptolemaic philosophers synthesized astrology from a combination of Egyptian and Chaldean astronomy and magic. Hipparchus discovered precession of the equinoxes, and Jewish messianists generated the prophetic book of Daniel. In combination, these developments convinced many that the universe was evolving spiritually, and Jews in particular expected the arrival of at least one Messiah approximately within a century. However, Interdenominational political struggles between independent Jews grew increasingly bitter and complicated. Different types of Jews, Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, Samaritans, and others, disagreed with each other and fought bitterly. In Jerusalem, a priest named Onias took his followers to Egypt to found a competing temple. Then, Hasmonean leadership in Jerusalem initiated a season of conquest. Notably, 
they conquered Samaria, Idumea, and the Galilee, and demanded, especially in the Galilee, that non-Jews either convert to Jerusalem's brand of Judaism or go into exile. Little information has survived about Egyptian Jews and their temple in exile. However, converted Idumean royalty, the ancestors of Herod the Great, produced the last Jewish dynasty ever to rule Judea. Ironically, the destruction of the Samaritan temple on Mount Gerizim encouraged the creation of early synagogues, which served as a model for Judaism in exile. For example, the Delos Synagogue, perhaps the earliest synagogue outside of Judea, served Samaritans in exile who had lost the ability to worship at their temple on Mount Gerizim. Within Judea, heated disagreements between Jews and Samaritans smoldered persistently, continually threatening the outbreak of civil war, even during the lifetime of Jesus. Largely cleared of non-Jews, the Galilee attracted a peculiar mix of conservative idealists and utopian revolutionaries, some with pretentious connections to royal Jewish genealogies. This contrasted starkly with developments in Jerusalem. After Rome conquered Jerusalem, Roman authorities and businessmen established increasingly profitable relationships with Jerusalem temple priests. Perceiving increasing corruption affecting the centers of Jewish worship, Jews in the Galilee actively embraced a reputation for encouraging radicalism and political unrest. An important New Age religious movement, Merkava mysticism emerged in Egypt among Egyptian Jews. After Hipparchus discovered precession of the equinoxes around 135 BC, Jewish philosophers quickly set to work reconciling astronomical precession with Ptolemaic astrology and Jewish prophecy. The Hebrew word Merkava means chariot and refers to the solar vehicle carrying God referenced in the book of Ezekiel. Among Jews, Merkava mysticism merged with ideas about the spiritual evolution of the universe. Merkava mystics believed that the universe began during the age of Taurus, continued to evolve through the age of Aries, and prepared imminently to pass into the new age of Pisces. Jewish Merkava symbolism looks Christian because early Christians often portrayed Jesus as a solar divinity. For example, a ceiling mosaic in an ancient chapel beneath the Vatican portrays Jesus as Sol Invictus, the unconquered sun. Merkava mysticism evolved and spread, especially among Jews concerned about the corruption of their faith in Jerusalem. Toward the end of the first century BC, the confluence of apocalyptic prophecy and New Age ideas, amply visible in Essene documents recovered in Qumran, raised the stakes in all conflicts among different types of Jews. Jews agreed only that choosing the correct set of practices and beliefs determined the outcome of imminent questions of spiritual survival. Both Jewish Merkava mystics and Gnostic Christians believed that the arrival of a new spiritual age associated astrologically with the passage of the vernal equinox from Aries to Pisces brought special opportunities. Individuals could repair the religion of their time and choose life instead of death. Their portions of divine spirit then could escape from our prison universe and return to the original creator deity, the true source of spiritual being. Specifically, they believed that divine human spirit had entered this universe through a gate in the constellation Cancer and fallen through five constellations, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius. Further, they committed themselves to the spiritual purpose of ascent, beginning at the winter solstice and proceeding toward the summer solstice, through seven constellations, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, 
Gemini, and finally exiting through the gate of Cancer. New Agers, both Christian and Jewish, believed that the divine incarnation of Jesus of Nazareth had marked the beginning of the age of Pisces. His death and resurrection had made spiritual ascent possible. From a sea of competing religious cults, Orthodox Christianity and Orthodox Judaism emerged slowly during the first centuries of the first millennium. The movements thrived by agreeing to disagree and to tolerate each other. They also agreed jointly to brand New Age Christian and Jewish movements as heresies. New Age Jewish beliefs largely disappeared from historical view following the disastrous Jewish wars and persecutions during the 1st and 2nd centuries A.D., hidden behind the historical development of Talmudic orthodoxy. However, archaeological discoveries confirm that Gnostic Christians, as well as certain Jewish communities, continued to value New Age beliefs. This makes sense. If Gnostic Christianity developed organically from authentic New Age teachings of Jesus, his followers who continued to live as observant Jews must also have continued supporting New Age teachings in a Jewish context after his death. Archaeologists have found at least eight sites in modern Israel where ancient buildings dating from the 3rd to 6th centuries A.D. incorporated decorative zodiacs that include a solar deity in the central roundel. Damage to the zodiacs at three of these sites prevents meaningful analysis. Of the remaining five sites, two synagogue zodiacs with images of Sol Invictus in the center will be discussed in my next movie, the fourth movie in this series. In this movie, the third movie in the series, we will look at the late 5th, early 6th century A.D. synagogue mosaics from Sepphoris and Naram that contain images of Apollo Aegeus in their central roundels. We also will look briefly at a few other related artifacts, as well as the only ancient Christian zodiac found in Israel, a 6th century mosaic in Beit Shean that portrays Jesus Christ and Mary Magdalene in its central roundel as the sun and the moon. During the centuries immediately following the life of Jesus, Nothing shows better how Jews in ancient times valued New Age religious ideas than the sublime iconography of the Sepphoris Synagogue Zodiac Mosaic. Seven of the eight ancient Zodiac Mosaics found in Israel occupy the ruins of Jewish synagogues. That is, in addition to astrological symbols, the ruins all contained Jewish symbols and structural elements, for example, built-in arcs for holding Jewish Torah scrolls. Outside Israel, astrology does not attach to Judaism or Jewish archaeology. However, a single exception exists in Dura Europa, Syria, where archaeologists found a Capricorn ceiling tile in the ruins of a synagogue built not later than 245 A.D. This movie focuses attention primarily on a mosaic found in Sepphoris, modern Sipori, in ruins of a synagogue from the late 5th and early 6th centuries A.D. The synagogue served a population of Jews who lived barely three miles from Nazareth, the place where Jesus had grown up, learned his father's trade, and worked as a tecton, a construction laborer or contractor. Immediately following the death of King Herod the Great in 4 BC, Sepphoris had served as a rebel stronghold, a challenge to Rome and a source of regional political troubles. Then Sepphoris suffered almost complete destruction by the Roman army under Quinctilius Varus, governor of Syria province. Sometime afterward, during the childhood and early adulthood of Jesus, Herod Antipas funded long-lasting rebuilding and fortification programs for Sepphoris that provided Jesus with opportunities for employment, learning Greek, 
and acquiring intimate familiarity with the meaning of Greek theater terms like hypocrite. As Jesus entered manhood in a region ruled by Herod Antipas, people began to call Sepphoris the Jewel of the Galilee. Centuries later, Jews in this region, in all likelihood, including descendant relatives of the family of Jesus, built the Sepphoris Synagogue, which featured one of the four surviving clear examples of ancient zodiacal mosaics. Talmudic Judaism of the day prohibited images of people, animals, temple implements, and pagan divinities in a synagogue. However, the Sepphoris Synagogue mosaic uses all of these treif, that is, non-kosher, images. Of special interest, the solar deity Apollo Aegeus appears in the central roundel of the mosaic, which serves as a multi-level astrological context. Apollo Aegeus is portrayed as a pillar surmounted by a yellow sun riding in a cart. Apollo Aegeus protected streets, entrances, and public places. Portrayed riding in a cart and surmounted by the sun, Apollo Aegeus in this mosaic seems a particularly appropriate choice as a protector of astrological ascent, the important return path for sparks of divine solar spirit. During the first centuries of the first millennium AD, philosophy, astrology, and ancient science imbued astronomical symbols with new religious power. New iconographic language emerged such that certain astronomical understandings about symbols that appear in the Sepphoris Synagogue mosaic apply to all surviving synagogue zodiac mosaics. The seven levels of the Sepphoris Synagogue mosaic structure immediately suggest astrological themes. Seven luminous bodies, seven levels of heaven, and seven zodiacal signs of astrological ascent. Synagogue zodiac mosaics usually portray two lions facing a place of honor between them. Attributions of these as the Lion of Judah and the Lion of Israel are nonsense. Judah and Israel competed with each other economically, politically, and cultically while they both existed. Even after Israel disappeared, conflict continued. Their differences remain enshrined in the New Testament as the enduring antagonism between Jews and Samaritans. Instead, the lions represent the constellations Leo Major and Leo Minor, marking the position of the summer solstice during the age of Taurus, broadly referencing the time of creation. Between Leo Major and Leo Minor in the top panel, in a position of highest honor, a victory wreath encloses the names of people whose donations helped fund the mosaic. Bull's heads beneath the lion's raised forepaws emphasize Leo's zodiacal connection to the summer solstice during the age of Taurus. The portrayal of a Torah shrine or temple surrounded by sacred implements of worship in a mosaic panel always represents a divine or platonic realm of archetypes in the northern sky. The shape of the shrine or temple mimics the shape of an ancient northern constellation called the Temple of Enlil. Today, we still can see this constellation in the northern stars of the constellation Heracles, near the edge of the north circumpolar sky. An understanding of these astronomical references helps us appreciate just how closely the symbolism of the Sepphoris synagogue mosaic compares to traditional Christian symbolism. For example, the north rose window of the Saint Denis Cathedral, called the Creation, portrays God as a nimbate deity in the center of a circle of zodiacal constellations. Gothic churches often contain windows expressing God's dominion over heaven and earth, complete with zodiacal signs and human figures symbolizing labors characteristic of the months. Ten beams of light emanate from the sun at the top of the solar pillar. 
the short beam on top rises vertically, emphasizing the orientation of the zodiac toward an especially important time of the year, the winter solstice sunrise between Sagittarius and Capricorn. One easily sees the importance of this moment in the zodiacs of Christian churches. For example, this Italian church zodiac, oriented toward the winter solstice, emphasizes the time for celebrating Christmas. However, Jews always have had little to celebrate during this time of year. The most important Jewish anniversaries near the winter solstice consist of Hanukkah and the beginning of the Babylonian siege of Jerusalem. From a traditional Jewish point of view, neither of these anniversaries seems important enough for special commemoration in a Galilean synagogue. Also, notice the crescent and star in the central roundel. During the 5th century AD, almost everyone in the Roman Empire would have recognized the crescent moon and star as a symbol representing the Virgin Mary as Mother of Jesus. One sees many similar uses of this symbol in Christian art history. For example, the obverse of this Byzantine coin identifies young Jesus in place of the star embraced by the crescent on his mother's lap. On the reverse, the cross emerges directly from a point within the crescent and bears Jesus represented by a chi. This painting provides another similar example. The crescent and star in the sky lights a nativity scene with magi bringing gifts to Jesus. However, the crescent and star on the Sepphoris mosaic is different. The star is on the wrong side of the crescent, and the illuminated crescent is on the wrong side of the moon. It seems as if the designer of the mosaic wanted to refer to Jesus, but indicate a mysterious difference from the public understanding about Jesus. The 4th century writings of the Christian astrologer Julius Firmicus Maternus identified a special type of occultation. The crescent moon covering up star-like Jupiter at sunrise as a key element of the astrological sign that announced divine incarnation, the sign known in modern times as the Star of Bethlehem. Early Christians adapted the crescent and star from its use as a symbol of Venus, the mother of Rome, to a symbol of the Virgin Mary as mother of Christ. Byzantine Christians flew crescent and star flags during times of stress to invoke Mary's assistance. Conquering Turks who entered Constantinople in the 15th century saw so many crescent and star flags that they decided to place the symbol on their national flag as a sign of good luck. Thus, the observant Jews who designed the Sefer Synagogue mosaic went out of their way to use symbolism that Christians of their time would have associated with the Virgin Mary and the birth of Jesus. Like Gnostics, Merkava mystics hope to escape this universe forever through the spiritual gate in Cancer. So, from a New Age astrological context, the whole mosaic looks like an invocation of protection for congregation members traveling the spiritual path of ascent from the winter solstice to the summer solstice. The Sepphoris zodiac mosaic contains many other images arranged throughout its seven layers of panels. If these images connect with the months of astrological ascent, beginning with January and proceeding through June and July, it would affirm a connection between some observant Galilean Jews with spiritual ideas that ran parallel to Christian Gnosticism. Further, it would suggest that a type of New Age Judaism recognized the importance of Jesus and persisted in the Galilee after the death of Jesus until at least the 5th century A.D. Most of the panels in the Sepphoris Synagogue mosaic depict scenes from the Torah, the first five books of the Hebrew Bible. Since early Hasmonean times, the Hebrew Bible was divided into weekly readings, independent of modern divisions of chapter and verse number. Each division is called a parasha. Thus, Identifying the subject of a mosaic panel allows one to connect it to a specific week in a Hebrew month associated with a zodiacal constellation. 
Beginning at its lowest level, a Sepphoris mosaic panel portrays angels visiting Sarah and Abraham. The angels announced that old Sarah would conceive a child, and Sarah laughed. This story appears in Parasha Vayera, read in the last week of Tevet. This Jewish month corresponds with January and Capricorn, the first constellation of astrological ascent. The second level comprises two panels that tell the story of the binding of Isaac. The left panel portrays two young men that Abraham told to stay behind as he and Isaac went to worship. The right panel, mostly destroyed, would have shown the replacement of Isaac with a sacrificial ram at the last moment. Jews read this parasha every year at Rosh Hashanah in the Jewish month Tishrei, corresponding with the astrological sign Libra. This constellation lies outside the astrological path of ascent. However, this biblical passage, marking the beginning of Jews as a special people, carries special meaning. One should look at this story as a formulation of the fundamental Gnostic choice facing every human being. Should one continue to perpetuate the imprisonment of spirit in a beastly existence, or should one choose to sacrifice the beast and liberate human spirit? Abraham chose to listen to the angel and sacrifice the beast so that the human being could live. The panel on the third level portrays personifications of the four seasons and a wheel of zodiacal constellations. Having risen just before sunrise on the day of the winter solstice, a crescent moon and star occupy positions indicating that the moon had just occulted, covered, a star, actually the planet Jupiter, on the day of its heliacal rising, its first appearance in the early morning sky. These are the simplest main characteristics of the sign of a divine birth, described by Julius Firmicus Maternus. Riding in a solar chariot, the pillar representing Apollo Aegeus safely bears solar spirit away from the winter solstice toward the summer solstice. This represents the beginning of the path of ascent. The fourth level comprises three panels representing different types of religious offerings. The center panel represents the showbread offering. Details of this offering appear in the parasha Mishpatim, read in the last week of Shavat, the Jewish month corresponding with February and Aquarius, the second constellation of astrological ascent. The leftmost panel of the fourth level represents the Tamid sacrificial offering. Temple priests perform this sacrifice every day in the morning and evening. Details of this sacrifice appear in the parasha Tetzaveh, read in the second week of Adar, the Jewish month corresponding with March and Pisces, the third constellation of astrological ascent. For the moment, we will ignore the offering in the rightmost panel of the fourth level. The fifth level comprises a single panel that portrays Aaron presiding over religious offerings in front of the Mishkan during the years that Jews wandered in the desert after the Exodus. This story appears in Parasha Shemini, usually read in Nisan, the Jewish month corresponding with April and Aries, the fourth constellation of astrological ascent. The symbolic reference to the age of Taurus in the top layer of the mosaic, left and right panels portraying Leo Major and Leo Minor with raised paws on bull crania, provides a direct reference to Taurus, the fifth constellation of astrological ascent. This corresponds with May and the Jewish month Ayar. Throughout this month, a ritual counting of days tracks progress toward the harvest. The counting of days toward harvest begins the second night of Passover in the Jewish month of Nisan, the month associated with April and Aries, then a 49-day period of counting the Omer stretches from Passover in Nisan through the month of Iyar, as grain ripens, to Shavuot in the month of Sivan, the beginning of the harvest season. 
The rightmost panel of the fourth level of the mosaic portrays an offering of first fruits during the festival of Shavuot in Sivan. This month corresponds with June and Gemini, the sixth constellation of astrological ascent. We now can recognize that the names inside the wreath in the center panel of the seventh layer of the mosaic, along with the entire sixth layer of the mosaic, representing the divine realm of archetypes, combine elegantly to represent an appearance of the Lord before the community. The Torah records just such an episode in Parashah Korach, read at the beginning of the Jewish month of Tammuz. This month corresponds with July and Cancer, the final constellation of astrological ascent that contains the spiritual gate for leaving this universe to return to God. The parasha records a period of judgment against Jews who rebelled against Moses. The Lord first caused the earth to swallow those who had spurned him, and then initiated a plague to kill the unrighteous. Only the intervention of Moses and Aaron enabled survival, and then only for those who accepted the laws of Moses administered by the Aaronic priesthood. Thus, every level and every panel of the Sepphoris Synagogue mosaic combines elegantly to emphasize the spiritual choice that every person must make, as well as the astrological path a person must follow to achieve salvation. Further, the purposeful way that the mosaic encodes this information, combined with the structural division of the mosaic into levels, as many as three panels wide, suggests a tantalizing possibility. The zigzag ascent and the placement of creation at the top suggests a relationship between ancient New Age Jewish ideas about ascent and ancient Jewish ideas about the Kabbalistic tree of life. Jewish tradition identifies Abraham as the originator of Kabbalah, a mystical philosophy that weaves ten or eleven centers of emanation into the Kabbalistic tree of life. Portrayed as the source of moment-to-moment -moment existence, the Kabbalistic tree of life first appeared in literature in the Sefer Yetzirah, or Book of Emanations, known to exist in the 13th century A.D. Nevertheless, some scholars hypothesize that Kabbalah began as early as the 2nd century B.C., developing in an ancient Jewish context that operated in parallel with Gnostic and Hermetic traditions visible in works like Poimandries. Regardless, most scholars consider it likely that Jewish Kabbalistic ideas had emerged at least by the 2nd century A.D. among scholars working on the Mishnah. Like Christians who believed in Gnostic mysteries, the author of the Sefer Yetzirah portrayed the mystical system of Kabbalah as the spiritual mechanism that runs our universe from moment to moment. Comparing the mosaic with the structure of the Kabbalistic tree of life enhances our understanding of the mosaic. For example, place the Sepphoris mosaic with a modern representation of the tree of life side by side. Place a marker in the center of the three panels of the lowest two levels, representing Capricorn, the first constellation of zodiacal ascent. These panels tell the story of Abraham from before the pregnancy of Sarah to the binding of Isaac. This marker corresponds with the lowest structural element of the tree of life, the tenth sephirah called Malkut, the emanation of kingship associated with the world of action. Straight up from that, place a marker straddling the upper boundary of the third layer and the middle panel of the showbread offering, corresponding with Aquarius, the second constellation of astrological ascent. This represents the ninth sephirah called Yesod, or foundation. The yeast that made the showbread rise connects to the emergence of the mechanistic universe of stars, planets, sun, and moon. Yesod marks the spiritual boundary between the world of formation and the world of action. 
the place of creative power where ideas acquire the clothing of matter. Next, place a marker to the left of the panel showing the Tamid sacrifice. Corresponding with Pisces, the third constellation of astrological ascent, this represents the eighth sephirah, called Hod, glory or splendor, a sincere response of thanksgiving to divine glory. At this point, one immediately can see hints of a connection between the Jewish tree of life and the Christian Lord's Prayer. In the Lord's Prayer, for example, a common version in Matthew 6.13 names the lowest three sephirot. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now place a marker in the center of the fifth layer. The panel showing Aaron offering sacrifices before the Mishkan represents the sixth sephirah, Tifaret, beauty characterized by harmony, kindness, and compassion. Associated with Aries, the fourth constellation of astrological ascent, this placement emphasizes the harmonization of Aaronic, astrological, and Kabbalistic approaches to religious belief and practice. Following the astrological path of ascent, the lions representing Taurus, the fifth constellation, correspond with Sephirot toward the top of the tree of life. This is consistent with their early role in creation. Place a marker on the right lion to represent the second Sephirah, Chokmah, the limitless flash of wisdom that dominates the world of emanation. Place a marker on the left lion to represent the third Sephirah, Bina, the intellectual understanding that awakens joy and begins the world of creation out of nothing. Place a marker on the rightmost panel of the fourth layer portraying the offering of first fruits at Shavuot. Representing Gemini, the sixth constellation of astrological ascent, this corresponds with the seventh sephirah called Netzach, victory or eternity. Kabbalists associate Netzach with a confident, enduring spirit of giving. Representing Cancer, the seventh constellation of astrological ascent, the three panels of the sixth layer combine with the center panel of the seventh layer to correspond to Keter, Chesed, and Geburah, the first, fourth, and fifth sephirot in the Tree of Life, respectively. Together, these sephirot symbolize a connection between Keter, the crown, radiating directly from God at the source of the world of emanation, and Chesed and Gavura, relating creation to form at the beginning of the world of creation. Place a marker on the right menorah in the sixth layer to represent Chesed, loving kindness, and place a marker on the left menorah to represent Gavura, might and severity. According to Josephus, in both Jewish antiquities and the Jewish war, the menorah in the Jerusalem temple symbolized the seven planets. Thus, associations of the Sephirot, Chesed and Gevurah, with the Menorot of the Sephiroth Zodiac mosaic connects these Sephirot to the generation of beneficial and detrimental planetary configurations, respectively. Two mosaic panels remain to connect with the first Sephirah, called Keter or Crown. As the intermediary between the unknowable God and the other Sephirot, Keter represents the divine creative source of faith, will, and delight. Many Kabbalists divided the single Sephirah into two parts, a divine superconscious part beyond conscious intellect called Keter, and a divine conscious part called Dath, or knowledge. Place a mark on top of the center panel with donor names to represent Keter and a mark on the panel directly below on top of the temple or Torah ark to represent Dath. The Hebrew word Dath corresponds with the Greek word Gnosis. Symbolically, the donors already have ensured their ability to escape this universe and return to the divine source of being, achieving eternal mystical union with God. At first, 
the idea that the Sefer Synagogue Zodiac Mosaic encodes Gnostic astrology on a Kabbalistic structure, facilitated by references to Orthodox Jewish parashot, seems impossible. However, consider the following. The structure of parashot in Judaism extends at least as early as the 2nd century BC, around the time that the author of the book of Daniel wrote Jewish New Age prophecy about the coming of the Messiah. The astronomical basis for New Age astrology emerged from the discovery of precession by Hipparchus around 135 BC. The astrological basis for Gnostic ascent also emerged in the 2nd century BC. And finally, the Sephiroth Synagogue Zodiac Mosaic supports the possibility, already suggested by some scholars, that the roots of Kabbalah emerged in close association with the development of New Age astrology, Gnosticism, and Parashot as early as the 2nd century BC. Thus, a 5th century Synagogue Zodiac Mosaic combining all these elements, begins to look like a highly developed expression of spiritual creativity that first emerged during the dawn of New Age Judaism toward the end of the 2nd century BC. The absence of Jewish textual references and a dearth of symbolic references to New Age Jewish mysticism from this time also suggest that a revolutionary aspect attached to the original mystical vision. In particular, the Jerusalem Temple never seems overtly to have embraced New Age ideas. But Galileans, famous as a source of religious revolutionaries, generated so many ways of speaking about Judean corruption that some entered Christian Gospels written in Greek. Lacking an easy distinction between Judeans and Galileans, Greek language criticisms of Judeans painted all Jews with the vices that Galileans meant only to describe Jerusalem's corrupt officials and temple priests. Imbued with the power of canonization, a few simple criticism of Judeans generated tragic unintended consequences affecting millions of Jews over the last 2,000 years. In my first movie, we started developing a magic decoder sheet for interpreting religious iconography related to astrological ascent on early Christian sarcophagi. We extended that table to include Christian mortuary frescoes and mosaics in the second movie. Finally, we now can add a row of Jewish parashot to the table, specifically for decoding the Sephora Synagogue Zodiac mosaic. Born under a planetary configuration called the Sign of Jonah, Jesus inspired both Jews and pagan God-fearers, that is, pagans who admired Judaism, to adopt New Age religious ideas developed by Jews in Egypt. Then, after his death, both groups credited him with inaugurating the Kingdom of Heaven in the Age of Pisces. Only one other ancient synagogue mosaic possesses a zodiac with a central roundel portraying Apollo Aegeus. In Naran, a village just north of Jericho, Jews decorated their synagogue with this mosaic in the 5th, 6th century AD. However, not much of this floor survived attacks by Christian iconoclasts in the 8th and 9th centuries. In the Onomasticon, the early church father Eusebius described this community as a village inhabited by Jews five miles from Jericho. The two surviving panels in the main body of the Naran synagogue mosaic include descriptions in Aramaic in proximity to significantly damaged images. The upper panel depicts a platonic realm of archetypes in the northern sky comprising a Torah shrine or idealized Temple of Enlil, flanked by two seven-branched menorahs above a portrayal of Daniel in the lion's den. Four lamps hang from outer branches of the menorahs. Above the left menorah, a three-line inscription reads, May be remembered Lord, probably Lordship, the son of Chris, and then maybe and his son, 
may they have a share in this probably holy place. Amen. Above the right menorah, another three-line inscription reads, May be remembered for good Lord, probably ship, Tina and his son Jacob, who support the renovation of probably the holy place. May they have a, it's an unknown word, in this holy place. Amen. Beneath the Torah ark, the figure of Daniel is labeled above and to the right. Daniel, peace. At Daniel's upper left, a three-lined inscription reads, May Benjamin the chief of this congregation, son of Yose. At Daniel's lower left, an eight-lined inscription reads, May be remembered good anyone who donates and gives or will give for this holy place, either gold or silver or anything. Amen. May they have a share in this holy place. Amen. At Daniel's lower right, an inscription reads, May Samuel be remembered for good. Two standing lions face Daniel, one from the left and one from the right. Weekly readings of the Hebrew Bible at Jewish services do not include the book of Daniel. However, the story's association with the Festival of Weeks connects the top panel of the Naran Mosaic with June and the constellation Gemini. On either side of Daniel, the two lions in the Naran Mosaic honor this prophet who foretold the coming of the Messiah. Names in the inscription like Chris and Tina beg the question, did Jews in this synagogue name their children after Jesus Christ? In addition, the mosaic includes a rare instance of the name Yose, the name of the brother of Jesus. Beneath the first panel, a second panel depicts a zodiac that encircles a merkava bearing the representation of a soul Aegeus. The zodiac comprises 12 segments, each depicting a zodiacal constellation symbol labeled with its associated month in Hebrew. The orientation of the zodiacal constellation with the center of Aquarius at the top points to an important sunrise moment from early to mid-February, again a remarkably unimportant time in the Jewish religious calendar. Unless this congregation considered Purim their most important holiday, we must look elsewhere for this date's importance. Extremely rare decorations for synagogues, zodiacs nevertheless have decorated many churches throughout history, often with images of Jesus as a solar deity in the central roundel. Church zodiacs almost always orient toward a few specific dates, for example, vernal equinox, winter solstice, summer solstice, cancer, and Aquarius. The, the orientations of all known synagogue zodiac mosaics match the orientations of church mosaics. For example, in the Saint Denis Cathedral, the zodiac in the North Rose window, called the Creation, portrays the same orientation, Aquarius at the top, as the mosaic in the Naaran Synagogue. Even the one ancient Christian zodiac found in Israel at Tel Istaba in Beit She'an emphasizes the importance of early February sunrise. In the Beit She'an mosaic, human images instead of zodiac symbols represent the months, and Helios and the moon occupy the center, looking like Jesus and Mary Magdalene. Christians considered the orientation of Aquarius at the top important because of its emphasis on Lent and repentance. The Naran mosaic confirms that Jews of Naran also thought that February was important. This is confirmed with the astrological symbolism in an out-of-place decoration in a Jewish catacomb in Beit Shearim, which also refers to Aquarius. A carving of Leda and the Swan on a Jewish sarcophagus refers to the constellation Cygnus, one of the three decans of Aquarius. Thus, New Age Christians and some Jews in ancient Judea used astrological references to Aquarius to signify repentance. Also, as shown in the second movie, 
Ophian Gnostic Christians used the Cygnus Decan in the zodiacal constellation Aquarius to represent Orpheus, transformed into a swan and raised into the northern circumpolar sky, an eternal metaphor for Jesus as the Good Shepherd. In much better repair than the top two panels, a third panel replaces the images that used to fill the entire lower half of the Naran's mosaic. The decorative abstract design includes images of plants, birds, beasts, and objects in ways calculated not to offend iconoclasts. Detailed information about the original designs that occupied this space has been lost forever. The incomplete portrayal of Helios on the cart in the center of the Naran zodiac generally seems to have attracted little comment. Similar to the portrayal of Apollo Aegeus in the Cephas mosaic, a pillar surmounted by a yellow sun represents the deity, but something else above the sun appears to radiate spiky solar rays. Upon close examination, however, the rays of this part of the mosaic terminate with crab claws, like the rays in the all-seeing eye on the Gnostic Christian amulet in the second movie. This immediately offers clarity. The spiky rays in the mosaic represent crab's legs associated with the zodiacal constellation Cancer. Thus, the zodiac orients toward Aquarius, but the central roundel still indicates the heavenly gate in Cancer as the intended destination for congregation members on the astrological path of ascent. One interesting astronomical note about the constellation Cancer. It contains the star cluster called Precep. Also called the Beehive Cluster in modern times, people in ancient times referred to it as the Manger or Crib. Thus, it's interesting that both the Sepphoris Mosaic and the Naharan Mosaic carry astronomical iconographic references to the birth of Jesus in the central roundels of their zodiacs. Further, it appears that both mosaics serve Jewish communities whose worship incorporated beliefs previously identified only as Gnostic Christian. This completes analysis of the ancient zodiac mosaics that portrayed Apollo Aegeus in their central roundels. We have seen that these Jewish mosaics referred to Gnostic beliefs about astrological ascent. In addition, the Sepphoris mosaic in particular suggests a surprising connection between Jewish ascent iconography and Kabbalah. One might say we found death in Sepphoris where we least expected it. Thank you for your generous attention.